welcome again to all participants from uh, Malaysia, Brunei, Philippines, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Indonesia and Timor Leste. All right. Um, can you not hear me clearly? Yes. That's good. Thank you. So just a few yes, housekeeping before we start. Thank you. Yes, um, madam. So I would, uh, I would like, uh, okay, if you have skipping before we start, if you could turn or turn it to silent mode, or you would be and it would really, it would be really good. So, um, we'll try to have a 15 minute study time and a 10 minutes break time in between just so that you won't be, you know, um, having a <laughs> too much mental. Okay. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll open for a Q and a session at the end of the presentation, or you could ask some questions during the time if you want to. All right. So, uh, before we go into the contents, um, I would just like you to answer a few questions, getting to know you guys. So if you could, um, scan this QR code, or if you cannot scan the QR code, you could go to this website and just insert the code. I'll give you uh, one minute to do so. Okay, good. We're getting responses. Happy, excited. Doctor, can you uh, show back the cook? Oh, oh, yeah. Gambira, uh, amazing. Great. Wait, wait. Doctor, oh. Not bad. Happy and can nervous. I, That's me. Can I get that that code? What code? code? Uh, it's on the top of the presentation. Right, feeling good. Okay, good. All right, let's go to the next one. Now, what are your expectations for this session? There's a small, uh, short answer would do. Very excited. Excited, good. Okay, knowledge, Bajaya. Give more information, new knowledge, convenient strategies. Okay, learn more about enhancing social skills. Have more knowledge from my students. That's good to know how to manage the students. Okay, I want to learn to more on how to teach autistic children. That's very good. Able to know techniques on how to handle special kids through, through enhancing social skills. Good, improve your skills. Have new knowledge and experiences. Oh, these are very dedicated teachers. I'm very happy that you all are very dedicated teachers. Okay, all right. Thank you for all your responses. So I get a bit of an overview of what you're expecting and how you're feeling today. So I hope we're all ready to start then. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. Okay. So we're going to go through four, um, components today. So I'll start with defining what are social skills. And then we'll get into the components of social skills. Um, and we will talk about the milestones of social skills. So at which age you should be having what type of social skills. And then we'll go through social skills deficits in children with special education needs. All right. So what are social skills? So according to the dictionary of psychology, so just a very um, direct translate uh, definition. It is a set of learned abilities that enable an individual to interact competently and appropriately in a given social context. All right. So 
These are the skills that we use every day to interact and communicate with others, which includes your verbal communication. So these are the words you use, the tone of voice, the volume of your speech, the rate of your speech, and also nonverbal communication, which includes your gesture, your body language, and your facial expressions. Right, so a person with a good social skills um, have the knowledge of how to behave in different social situations. So you have an expected uh, set of skills to behave in different social situations that like you will need different skills to behave with your family. You will need different skills to behave with your friends. You would need different skills to behave with people you don't know. And also you, uh, a person with good social skills should also understand both written and implied rules of interacting or communicating with others. So not only do you know how to behave, but you should also know how to understand how to interact with others, understand others' emotions and feelings in a certain communication, communicating setting. All right. So it's also sometimes, sometimes referred to as emotional intelligence, according to Webster. And it's the combination of the ability to understand yourself, your own emotional states, your feelings, and also to understand and respond to other people, the person you are talking to. Okay. And it also, um, and it also includes the ability to understand how people communicate and interact, and also to build interpersonal relationships. So without social skills, you would definitely have troubles in building relationships. Okay, some of the examples of what you would call a social skill is listening to and understanding what people say. So attending to people, communicating your thoughts, your needs, and your feelings through your words as well as your actions. So the verbal and nonverbal communication. Managing your emotions in different social interactions. Respecting social boundaries and social rules, so understanding personal space, um, understanding there are some things you can and cannot do in different social contexts. And adjusting what you say, how you say, it, as well as what you would do based on different situations. All right, so um, there are cultural differences in social skills because um, social skills is very um, uh, heavily dependent on culture, where cultural differences uh, in interaction between adults and the children may affect how the social skills develop in different children. Okay, so culture basically serves as a guideline to structure these proper social behaviors. Now, let's say if you have different parenting style, if you grew up with parents who are very authoritative, or if you grew up with parents who are very, you know, laid back and, you know, let you do whatever you want to do, um, you would grow up to be someone who has different type of social skills. So let's say if your parents are very auto authoritative and, you know, um, you need to follow everything they do, whatever they say is the right thing and whatever they say not to do is the wrong thing. So you would grow up being someone who is, um, you know, scared to do this, to make decision, always following the rules. But if you have a parent who um, teaches you to be confident in whatever you do, gives you choices to be, be yourself and you are more laid back in parenting, so you might be someone who is always, um, you know, you have no trouble making decisions by yourself and you're always confident in whatever you do. So um, the culture or background that we grow in uh, heavily influences our social skills um, in our daily living, right? For example, something that is um, very basic but um, relies heavily on cultural differences is the way you eat. Okay, in some culture, it is socially acceptable to eat with your hands, like in the Malay culture, in the Indian culture. So we eat, we eat with our hands and it's a, a socially accepted thing. But maybe when you go to somewhere else, eating with your hands is not acceptable. In China, for example, you will eat using your chopsticks and it is socially acceptable. But even if using chopsticks, different cultures has different ways of using chopsticks. Some, you know, may share their food together with one chopstick. 
some may use individual chopsticks and have individual foods for themselves. So these are heavily um, reliant on culture. All right. Um, aside from cultural differences based on um, races and religion, um, cultural differences also affect social skills based on different contexts. For example, wearing headphones in the library while you're studying is a socially accepted thing because a library is a quiet place uh, where everyone else uh, needs their own space and you are not supposed to make a lot of noise. So it's socially acceptable to wear headphones in a library setting, All right? Um, in the public transport, it is socially acceptable to wear headphones in some places, whereas in some places they could be perceived as being rude. Okay, so again, this ha this heavily relies on the cultural um, uh, base of the place or um, the context that you're in. However, if you're at um, the dining table having your dinner, it is um, highly inappropriate to be wearing your headphones while eating with your family. So this is a socially um, inappropriate thing in many cultures. Okay, so although it's the same action wearing a headphone, but in different contexts, it could actually be both acceptable and an unacceptable social um, skill, social behavior. Sorry. Okay. So what, uh, why are social skills important in our lives? All right, um, so social skills, because it compasses the ability to understand ourselves and understand others, um, will definitely result in ha us having a positive relationship with others. It also helps in us making and sustaining friendships, as well as improve our positive behavior uh, because we assess what is um, socially accepted and good and also reduces negative behavior because we think of what is accepted in a social um, setting, right? It shapes our confidence and self-esteem because we are accepted by other people, so we'll be more confident. And yes, that being said, being accepted by society as well as improve our overall quality of life. So when children with special educational needs uh, lack in social skills, it will definitely affect all of this. All right, so components of social skills. So what I have here is uh, different views of what are the components of social skills. And hopefully um, by the end of it, uh, we could see a pattern of what are the um, general components of social skills. All right, so according to a study by Kenny and Barn, as well as Waltz. Um, so what they did was they divided social skills into five, uh, four different skill set. Where the first one being foundation skills, which covers basic social interaction. This includes skills like making eye contact, knowing what is personal space, you know, knowing what is too close, what is um, you know, safe touch, gestures, facial expressions. So all the things that you need to understand in order to be able to initiate and maintain basic social skills. And then they talk about interaction skills, skills that you need to interact with others. This includes um, listening, resolving conflicts, turn taking in conversation, communication intent, which is the intention to communicate with others, as well as topic appropriation, which refers to maintaining a topic in conversation. And then the next skill set is effective skills, which is understanding yourself and others. So this um, includes identifying feelings, your feelings, as well as the feeling of the person you are talking to. Demonstrating empathy, so understanding the feelings that your communication partner are feeling, um, as well as decoding nonverbal cues such as body language, gestures, facial expression. So a person might be saying something, but you could interpret more by looking at their nonverbal cues. Right? The last skill set that they talk about is cognitive skills which are skills that are needed to maintain more complex social interactions. So this includes social perceptions, um, making choices, self-monitoring. So, you know, reflecting on yourself, 
whether you did good, you did bad, what you, you need to improve on, and also understanding norms, because different social contexts have different norms, different cultures have different norms that like we talked about just now. Okay. Now, another view looks at the components of social skills uh, into six different categories, which is attention and concentration, receptive and expressive language, uh, play skills, self-regulation, executive functioning, as well as planning and sequencing. All right, for the first one, attention and concentration. So this referred to being able to uh, sustain effort and being focused in doing activities. So uh, this will then help for you to be being focused in having conversations or having social interactions with other people. Um, the second one, receptive and expressive language, covers the understanding and use of verbal and nonverbal communication. And the third one, play skills, um, covers engaging in activities, uh, interaction with others, interaction with others, as well as abstract thinking, which uh, is involved in role play and pretend play. Self regulation covers. Um, skills to obtain, maintain, and change your emotions based on conversation, interactions, and social situations, as well as um, knowing what is accepted behavior and unaccepted behavior in different social contexts, and also giving attention to your conversational partner and also the social norm to social context. Executive, executive functioning refers to higher order reasoning and thinking skills, such as uh, making references, making um, assumptions of, as to what people are thinking based on their verbal and nonverbal cues, right? So these things are important in order for you to understand the social context, the um, air of the room, okay? Planning and sequencing covers multi-step tasks. Um, that is required to achieve a well-defined result. So this usually uh, plays a role in making decisions, um, planning, um, yeah, making decisions, planning for things and stuff like that. All right, so another view looks at social skills in five different skill set, which is basic communication skills, um, this is the ability to listen, follow directions. So it's the same as receptive and expressive language. So the skills that you need to, the basic skills that you need to communicate with other people. And you also need empathy and rapport skills, which is understanding feelings, how to connect with others, um, interpersonal skills, uh, which includes sharing, joining in, asking for permission and turn taking. Problem solving skills. So you, uh, you know when to ask for help, you know when to apologize in different situations, making decisions as well as accepting consequences. Okay, and also accountability, which is owning your decisions and recognizing your mistakes as well as being cooperative to others. All right, so social skills milestones. Okay, I can't see the comment section, but I think there are questions over here, but Parfin will help us, okay? Okay, so um, uh, we, will be, we will be referring to two views on developmental milestones, and I'll talk about why is it important for you to know uh, the, developmental, the developmental milestones of your students towards the end of this um, section, okay? Okay, so according to Maureen Hastert, so what they did, Maureen Hastert, is they uh, compiled um, a few different opinions and views on the developmental milestones of social skills. At two months, um, a baby would generally um, cry to get their needs met and they self soothe by sucking on hands and fingers. So this is very uh, primal, very um, early sets of social skills. So they start to smile and make eye contact. And also they cry in different ways. Uh, at four months, they cry, they start crying in different ways. So you have a different cry for when you're hungry, your different cry when you're in pain, you have a different cry for, you know, when you want attention. And they start smiling in response to their parents. 
And also they will start playing with toys by shaking them. Okay, at six to nine months, babies will start responding to people's emotion by crying, smiling or laughing. So there's a more complex emotion. And they start to show strange anxiety where they already know the people around them. Okay, so they start to be more clingy to their parents and their siblings. Um, and at 12 months, they recognize more people, they recognize more emotions. So they start to play favorites with familiar people. So people that they feel safe with. And they would also uh, start enjoying simple interactive games. So they can actually start to interact with people. Okay. Um, all right. So at 18 months, uh, they have more complex emotions now. So they have more temper tantrums because although they have more complex emotions, um, their language may not be uh, on par with their, the emotions that they're feeling. Okay. So they might become more uh, restless, more frustrated as they try to communicate and be more independent in showing their thoughts, their emotions. All right. At two years, they will then start to have simple role play like imitating parents or imitating uh, sounds you make and they'll be more interested in company. So wanting people to be with them all the time and they start engaging in play, um, but they do what we call parallel play, which is uh, playing with other kids, but not with them playing at the side of other kids. So they might be playing blocks beside their brother, but not playing blocks with their brother. Okay. So they start wanting company, but they don't know yet how to make friends with the company that they have. All right. At the age of three years, they start to express a wider range of emotions. So anger, sadness, frustration, um, excitedness, um, fatigue and stuff like that. So they are more interested in pretend play. So pretending to be a fireman, pretending to be whatever they see, a policeman, a teacher. So if they started early education, then they might come back to, you know, come back home and, you know, um, ask you to play uh, with them where they become the teacher and you become the student because it's what they see at school. All right. And they are spontaneously very kind and caring at this age. At four years of age, they will start playing with other kids. Um, and they are more like they are more laid back and can separate from caregivers more easily. So like I have a four year old now, um, I could easily, you know, she would easily find a friend and then say goodbye to me and not remember that I'm there anymore. All right. So they can also sometimes work out small conflicts with other children um, and even with adults as well. Like, um, my daughter now can um, actually identify when I'm feeling sad, when I'm feeling frustrated, and she'll ask me if I'm okay and try to um, tell me that everything's going to be fine. So uh, that's um, the social skills that they are displaying. So, you know, being kind and caring, um, starting to understand others' emotions and trying to um, and trying to make them feel better. So now that they're starting to understand others' emotions, so um, they will then be able to um, be involved in more complex interactions as well. Okay. Uh, at the age of five to six years, uh, they now have a highly more um, complex language, so they would have more conversational uh, and more independent in interactions and communication. They would then test boundaries to see how much they can go, the uh, consequences for the things that they do. Uh, they are eager to please and help out because they want other people to be happy of them uh, and proud of them. And they begin to understand what it means to feel embarrassed. So, you know, boys and girls, they will start feeling like, oh, I cannot be friends with boys because they are boys. Uh, this is the age where they start to, uh, they start to understand that um, they are different in genders and start to feel embarrassed. All right, at the age of seven to eight years, they would be more aware of others' perceptions. So what others think about them and they would want to behave well 
because they want to be accepted by their friends, by their teachers, by the people around them. All right, so um, this is the age where their emotion gets a little bit more complex. So they will try to express their feelings with words because they have more of a complex language now, but they may resort to aggression when they can't express what they feel uh, or what they want to do about the situation. Okay, at the age of nine to 10 years, uh, this is when they start sharing secrets and jokes with their friends. So a bit of figurative language going on in there uh, where um, they start understanding um, sarcasm and jokes, and then they start to develop their own identity. Uh, this is where you see children start um, withdrawing from family activities and conversations because they've been, you know, they've been living in that safe space and they've um, known the culture in their family and now they're trying to build their own identity by following their friends and listening more to their friends' perspective and perceptions of them. All right, by that age as well, they are more affectionate. They are very curious. Um, they can be selfish. Uh, because this is the age where they think that they are right. <laughs> they can sometimes be rude and argumentative, uh, but they do use a, a lot more problem solving, um, negotiating, and also comprising skills, especially with their peers. Uh, but this is also the result of, you know, having uh, trained academically to problem solve, to um, do step-by-step -step tasks, so this all comes with that as well. All right, um, at the age of 11 to 15, so this is where they go to middle school and then to young adulthood and adolescent. So moods and emotions are highly impacted by hormones then, because this is when um, you go to um, young adulthood. Yes, and you start thinking more logically um, at this stage as well, you value your friends more than your family or others' opinions because you feel like, um, okay, these are the people who are at the same level as me. They're experiencing the same things as me. So what they say must be the right thing. All right. And they begin to develop more personal values and they start to understand there are consequences to their actions. So then they will start thinking more of uh, what actions they should do. At, at, at the age as well, they begin to show empathy, so understanding other people's uh, feelings and emotions, and begin to handle more complex emotions like fear, so fear of being unaccepted uh, by your friends, or fear of doing something wrong, or frustration, so not being able to do what you want. Um, so this is that age where everything is very, you know, um, confusing. They might also uh, feel emotions like rejection and loneliness. So this might be related to not, not being accepted or don't know where your place is in the society. So it's just a, um, an age level of uh, confusing, confusing decisions, decision making. All right. Um, but also at that age, they should be able to make more appropriate decisions to resolve peer conflict. So friendship should be a bit more mature at that age. All right, 16 to 18 years old. So this is uh, going to young adulthood. Um, they strive to be more independent um, and they may start emotionally distancing from caregivers. So they feel like they have their own identity now and they should be able to try to discover their strength, weaknesses, as well as improve on where they should be improving. So this is more on uh, self-regulation and self um, Okay, so just assessing yourself to discover your strengths, your weaknesses. Okay, and then at this age as well, they would begin to look at how they can positively impact the world. So they're starting to think about what they can do to make a difference um, and work towards it. And we, when they achieve something, they show pride in success. So uh, having a sense of achieve, achievement and accountability. And this is also the age where you will be more interested in dating relationships, so really um, romantic relationships with others. So it's a normal age for you to feel that as well. Okay. So um, this social and communication model 
uh, is something that uh, speech therapists in particular likes to refer to. Uh, it's a model by Monique Simpson who is an Australian speech therapist who works with um, children with autism. So what she did was she came up with this model because um, as we went through in the um, definition section, um, social skills is high re highly related to the skills that you need to interact and communicate daily with other people. Therefore, you cannot run away from um language and social skills it's two skills that need to it's two skills that need to develop simultaneously in order for you to be able to have a good quality of life so what monique simpson did was she mapped it onto a model that you can see over here where there are different um different areas of speech and language as well as social skills and what skills you should have at which age. So when we talk to parents with um, special educational needs children, let's say um, it's an autistic child who is 12 years old, nonverbal, um, does not have eye contact. And when we ask the parents, what do you want to focus on? Oh, I want my child to be able to converse with me at the end of this year. We would look back at this model and see where your child is at. If your child is nonverbal, has no eye contact, his or her skills is at the level of a three and a six, a uh, three to six months old, whereas talking starts at one year old. So how do you expect for us to move to that level in you know a couple of months? So this is a very good model that you could refer to to explain to parents when they have um, unrealistic goals for their children and also because um, language and social skills go together um, we like to refer to this to know that um, whether their language skills is on par with their social skills because usually if the language skills is at the level of three and six months, that is where the social skills would be at as well, right? So if he has more social skills, uh, if his social, social skills is more advanced, then maybe we could, you know, um, make our goals more advanced as well, all right? So this is something that is a bit more holistic um, in terms of looking at where the child is at, not only being specific to social skills, but other skills related to social skills because you won't be able to master social skills if you don't master the rest of the skills all right so but what i will focus on today is um, the milestones uh, pertaining pragmatics if you can see over here as well as social so pragmatics is basically social language so the language skills that you need to be able to be involved in social situations. All right. So, um, but the difference with the model that I showed you before is that Monique Simpson only covers to the age of five years old uh, because her focus is more on preschool children and early intervention. All right. Okay, so at three to six months, um, your child would display emotional connections so you um the behavior that they display uh is for the purpose of seeking company so it's pretty intentional uh it could be uh, it could have a meaning or it's just a form of communication and this is usually portrayed by cries okay so at the age of three to six months uh baby's cries may or may not uh have a specific meaning it may, not, or may or may not be uniform as well, okay? Because it's not intentional as of yet. Um, as they grow to six to nine months, they become more intentional because according to the previous model, this is where they start to cry with different intentions, right? So they cry when they're hungry, the cry is different when they're hungry, the cry is different when they are upset, the cry is different when they are um, uncomfortable, right? And this is where they start 
learning about emotions by looking constantly at other people's face, uh, facial expression, body language and gestures to gain information. Okay, um, when you look at someone, okay, what is she feeling? What is she implying on me? So this happens between babies and parents usually or caretakers. And they would have basic interactions, like simple signals, like, you know, they could imitate hi, bye bye and stuff like that. Um, and they could also smile to you or maybe um, respond to your um, respond to your, you know, angry tone by uh, having a sad face. So they have more reactions than. But this, uh, they are still very basic um, and not super intentional. OK. Okay, at 10 months, they have more interaction. Um, they have joint attention, which means um, they can focus on one thing with another communication partner. Uh, so let's say this broccoli over here, which my daughter left beside me. <laughs> so at the age of six to nine months, uh, they might take this broccoli and play by themselves. By 10 months, my daughter might take this broccoli and give it to me so that I can focus on the broccoli as well. So this is what we call joint attention. Wanting someone to join what you are attending to. Okay. And their interaction, uh, uh, their signals are more complex. So they might signal to request. Um, if they start having words by, by this month, then they might be requesting things like, um, they might request your attention by saying mama, mama, or also uh, request for things like susu by, uh, sorry, milk by pointing to the milk bottle or by saying, you know, syllabic words like susu or baba, something like that. Okay. And they might also direct you to follow them, follow their instructions. Uh, and also they will start wanting to show you and give you things like uh, the broccoli I saw, I mentioned just now. Okay. Um, at 12 months, they have definite likes and dislikes. So they might like some toys, they might not like some toys. They might like um, the way you hold them and they would also show that they don't like something and they have more complex signaling. Okay, at 12 to 18 months, uh, sorry, they can start follow the ideas of others in play. There are lots of copying at this time around. So you could play blocks with them and they might copy you. Um, they might not, you know, play with you, but they would look at what you are playing and then uh, copy you or they would copy sounds. They will start copying facial expressions. They will start copying things like, you know, laughing at certain things. Um, and if they start talk, if they start having, they should start having more words. So they would share and comment more about immediate experience. So what they are doing now, like they would say, um, they would be looking at a toy, um, and being happy and asking you to look at the toy and say, oh, I was happy because I look at this toy. Okay, but they can only share and comments about what they are immediately experiencing at that time. So they won't be talking about what they did yesterday, but only what they're doing at that time. Okay, at two years old, um, this is where they want to interact more with others. They could want to learn more from you. They would like to play more with you. Um, they are more curious as to what you are doing um, and why you are doing them. And at this age, because um, their language is quite developed already, they can request uh, most of what they want. They can also start to protest when they don't want to do something um, and they can respond to you. You can have small conversations with them and they can start greeting um, spontaneously saying hello, saying goodbye, good night, um, things like that. Okay, at the age of two to three years, uh, they start getting interest in other ideas. Um, so maybe things that they've seen at school, things that they've seen with their with their um, immediate family, things that they've seen with their big family, and they realize uh, what they want um, as well as what they want from others. Uh, so they realize that, oh, I want attention from you so I can do it this way. Uh, but at this stage, they are not good sharers. So my toys are my toys and your toys are my toys. So yeah, um, and they can talk about uh, actions of others and feelings. So, for example, if they get hurt by others, um, they might say, oh, I'm sad because she took my toy. Um, and also talk about their own feelings. So, I'm happy because of this. All right. 
uh, at the age of three to four years, um, they will start to know, uh, want to know more about how other people think and feel, and they learn to share and get on with others. So they learn to play with others. Um, they start understanding that people may not understand them, so they need to say it, and they can share more. All right, so they are a bit uh, less rigid then. Okay, at three to four years as well, they ask more questions. They ask a lot of questions uh, because they want to obtain new information. So something new that they see, they will ask until they get tired of it. Um, they are good at initiating topics. So they would want to talk to you about stuff, but they are very highly distracted. Okay, so they have difficulty sustaining more than two turns. So they could, you know, come to you and say, okay, mommy, look at this. I have this new toy. But when you ask her more about the toy, she would just, you know, just run away and go and find another toy. So they would, they want to um, start interacting, but they still have not had, uh, they still don't have the ability to maintain that interaction for a long time. Okay, at four to five years, this is when they start to build relationships. So, you know, um, having a certain set of friends that they want to be friends with, um, uh, picking who they want to be friends with. Uh, so this is when you hear a lot of, no, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. I'm, I'm going to be friends with her. Uh, so this is where parents get a little bit, uh, you know, um, a little headaches and confusion because um, they're just uh, acting up. <laughs> Okay, and they continue to learn about differences with other people. So they um starting to learn that um different people uh have different you know personalities, have different emotions, and they have a they do lots of storytelling. So things that they experience uh, immediately as well as things they experience before, things that they see, they can actually retell the story to you. Okay. Uh, so this is also the age where they can initiate and they can maintain a longer interaction. Um, if they do make mistakes during the conversation, they can actually repair what the mistakes that they've done, um, as well as uh, they are able to terminate the conversation uh, appropriately. So like saying, uh, okay, now I'm going to do something else. So they can actually comment that they're going to do something else and stop that conversation. All right. So. Why are, the, are these milestones important? Uh, why is it important for you to know where your students is at? Is because, uh, firstly, uh, if you don't know, uh, you know, if your own child or your student, if you don't know whether they are typically developing or if they have um, any challenge in education, you would um, look at the milestones to determine if your child has the typical skills relevant to their age group. So does this five-year-old child have the skills of a five-year-old? So that's where uh, you want to check that. And if your child is um, diagnosed with anything, so you could identify where the student or the child's current developmental age is at. Okay. And when you get to identify this, then you can identify what skills that they need um, in order for them to achieve the next stage of development. So let's say you have a, an eight-year-old autistic girl um, whose social skills is at the level of a two-year-old. So you know what skills they already have. So what you need to work on is what they don't have. Uh, but you cannot uh, straight away move to the skills of a six-year-old because this girl is at the level of a two-year-old. So you need to start with the level of a two-and-a-half-year-old. This is the next step after the immediate level that they are at, okay? Because in order for you to achieve more complex level, you need to achieve all the different steps before it. Okay, so it's important for you, um, especially as special education teachers, if you don't know where to start, map them to the social development, uh, to the developmental milestones, okay? This applies in all areas, social skills, language, motor skills, uh, if you don't know where to start with your student, look back at where they at at the moment. And then you know which uh, what is the next step that you need to take. Okay, so um, don't worry if you cannot find. Um, okay, this these slides will be shared, but uh, if you could find a decent developmental milestone from your local, um, if from your local clinic, your local hospital, you could refer to that as well. 
like in Malaysia, we have um, this, um, the pink book and the blue book where after you give birth, uh, each child has a book and in that book, you actually have milestones as well. So what I do, because I know milestones, I am very diligent in writing uh, when my daughter achieves her different milestones because um, I want to know if she is typically developing or not. Okay, uh, so um, as school teachers, you could also refer to that, refer to your local health facility uh, because I'm pretty sure uh, every country has this and you can refer to that in order for you to know more about where your child is at. All right. So uh, before we go into social skill difficulties in children with special education needs, uh, I am going to open for any questions. Okay, are there any questions from anyone or uh, is everyone okay so far? I'm just looking at the chat. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum salam. I'm teacher Joaria from Trenanu. Okay, my yes. question is how to convince the parents if they are uh, unable to accept their uh, child mm -hmm. dealing with all the skills that uh, Dr. sharing just now? Uh, so, uh, how do we talk to the parents if they are uh, able to accept yes. that their uh -huh. child might have um, difficulties in some of the skills that mm -hmm. I've talked to? Is that correct? Yep, yep. Uh, something okay. like that. Uh, so, is this parent, uh, does this child already has a diagnosis? Yes, of course. Okay, uh, all right. So, if uh, already, already in the school. Okay. Yeah, so already in special education, is it? Yeah, yep. yep. Mm. Okay, so um, so what you even though that the parents very educated actually, yeah, uh, I, that's <laughs> that, why that's usually the case. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's usually the case. Don't worry, I understand that. <laughs> okay, so uh, so what you can do is um, I think a very good place to start is to uh, identify where the child sits at in the developmental milestones. So you could search for developmental milestones uh, of different skills, uh, such as the language skills, the speech skills, as well as um, social skills. Um, and you need to observe what the child can do. Okay, when you observe what the child can do, map it onto the milestones. And you can use that as an evidence to explain to the parents. Oh, okay, for example, okay, this is what your child can do. So according to these milestones, um, she is at the level of a, let's say, four-year-old. Uh, yeah. So in order for us to be able to help her, uh, we need to make her, uh, we need to um, get her to the next level. So if the mother say, no, I'm confident that my child is at, uh, you know, her appropriate level. Okay, now look back at the developmental milestones. Okay, can your child do this? You could, you could, you could um, show the skills at the level of the child. Let's say the child is an eight-year-old. So look at the eight-year-old milestones. Can your child do this right now? Uh, if the answer uh -huh. is no, then you go back to the seven-year-old. Can your child do this? And then you go to the six-year-old. So you can, you can start from their age and then, because uh, with parents like this, you need to show them proof um, that uh, this is the level that your child is at. Yeah, so instead of just, um, you know, talking to them uh, with your observations, you could pair it with something that is more um, evident, like milestones. Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay. Yeah, you it's, can try that. Uh, yeah, inshallah. inshallah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But, but I understand uh, there are a lot of parents like that. <laughs> Especially educated parents. Okay. Uh, yes? no, no, okay. Yeah. Uh, this is my question. Uh, this is not my question. This is my opinion. Uh, okay, yes. Okay, yeah, in my opinion. This, uh, uh, this is the, the, the development state of the, the, the child uh, uh, for the from a, from a, from a student, from a child. Uh, mm -hmm. As, as a special education student, uh, there will be need for, for supporting uh, parents, teachers, and community. Yes. Uh, to, to be equality 
a way there uh, for my student. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, yeah. definitely. Okay. Our special education children need um, support from the teachers, parents, as well as the as much as the students as well. I agree with that. Thank you, Mr. Zhao. Uh, is, did I uh, say your name correctly? Hello, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question. Um, yes. But first of, first of all, I uh, appreciate for your presentation. Um, my question is uh, how to overcome because some uh, parents, uh, uh, they are their children is special needs. They they are shy to send their children to school. Okay, I don't know yes. in Malaysia, but in Timor Leste, uh, sometimes happen. So how to approach the parents so they will more confident uh, about their children uh, with special needs? They don't sign, go to school. Okay. Thank you. Um, that's a very good question. So our friend from Timor Leste said that. Um, some parents are shy to send their special educational needs student to school, um, children to school. Okay, so uh, my advice is, um, if you could talk to the parents, um, do not focus on the disability, but focus on what support the child needs in order for them to have a better quality of life. So the reason why we need to send them to school is so that they can get the necessary support that they need that we might not be able to give at home. So focus on the support that they need, the environment that they need, that schools are able to provide. Yeah, so something like that. So instead of focusing on their disability, focus on what schools can provide for them. So schools can provide them with skills, schools can provide them with support, schools can provide them with the um, optimum environment for them to be able to learn and have a better quality of life. Yes, focus on the ability of the child. Thank you, uh, Ms. Maria Bernadette. Okay, I, I have a question here from Karen. Thank you very much. Caroline Stolling. No worries. Okay, so she says here, let's say we already identify the child development milestone. Example, seven years old ASD boy is in stage of an 18 month level. Can you suggest any activity or intervention, especially in social communication? Okay, uh, uh, Miss uh, Carolyn, yes, definitely. Um, what we will do is actually we will cover uh, activities uh, for intervention in the third day with Miss Afini, um, which will be targeting on social skills and social communication. All right, so she will go through that. Uh, but it's very good that you uh, you um, know that we need to identify first, and then also we can uh, and then we can plan for intervention. Okay. All right. So any other questions? I might open for one more question if there's a burning question. You will cover activity and intervention in the third day. Okay, uh, Miss uh, Caroline. No worries. Okay, all right. So if we don't have any other questions, uh, we might take a 10 minutes break, uh, coffee break, toilet break, and then we'll come back at 11.07. If that's okay with everyone. Okay, okay. All right. So, but in the meantime, if anyone has any questions, you can just ask in the chat section. I'll be here. Thank you. Okay, we have one minute. Okay, right on time. <laughs> Okay, welcome back everyone after our 10 minutes break. So uh, before I share my slides again, um, let's have a bit of a chat session. <laughs> Okay, so um, we have participants from different countries today, uh, which may have different um, acceptable and unacceptable social norms. So um, can you tell me a bit more about your work culture? Like how do you socialize at work? Um, you know, how do you usually spend lunchtime at work? Uh, what is the expected social norms at your workplace? And how do you balance between your uh, work and life, um, you know, uh, situation? 
All right, so um, anybody want to start? Somebody from Malaysia maybe start to start off? So that we can share our social, uh, our normal culture at work in Malaysia. So maybe I'll start with myself. Then. Okay, so what I consider as normal for me in terms of my uh, work culture is um, I work nine hours a day uh, from Monday to Friday. So from 7.30 to 4.30 lunch time. I would usually go out to lunch with um, a close colleague at work. So I won't go out in big groups, maybe two or three people per group during lunch time. Um, and usually I don't talk about anything work related after 5.30. So I have a separate phone number for um, work related um, stuff, uh, which I usually turn off um, at 5.30. So that is my work culture. So how about, um, is there anyone from Brunei who would like to share with us? What is the work culture like in Brunei? Do we have a representative from Brunei? Anyone else want to start? Yes, I can hear someone talking. Can you introduce yourself first and then tell us a bit about your work culture? Hi, I am Hayati. I am Subino Hello. Hayati. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, very clear. Okay. So I am Cikgu Subino Hayati Binti TV from Brunei Darussalam. So I work at, uh, at secondary school. So usually we start at 7.30 until 12.30 for the um, lunch break. And then we continue again for afternoon stay back from 1.30 to, depends, it's depends. Usually uh, one, one and a half hour in the afternoon or it can be more. So usually uh, some of us prefer to uh, direct from from the morning from the morning session until direct until in the in the afternoon. Let's say for uh, there's no lunch break, yeah. we will be lunch break around uh, two p.m. like that. Um, so I think it's it's the same with the the, the school maybe. I think uh, for uh, after office hours, usually after four thirty p.m. So that's one. That's the time for us to for the family lah. So normally we off the phone also. <laughs> Some of us. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Hayati from Brunei for sharing us your um work culture so it's quite similar where after we usually spend time with our family so anybody from uh, the philippines would like to share good morning good morning introduce yourself I'm Rev Rose Flores from Philippines and for the Filipinos are we are really hard working and we can easily adapt to any type of environment and then we work hard uh, at least eight hours a day and then sometimes it's okay for us to have few days of overtime so that we can finish our work and willing to extend our help to our co colleagues or co-teachers and mostly during our working time just like lunch time we almost we always have a lunch with colleagues because we are fun of sharing stories or fans of sharing our experience for the days so that uh, it would uh, give us less stress 
that we can express our our day or our something like that and then sometimes after work we used to hang out or have a dinner with our colleagues so sometimes it help us to relieve our stress during work hi thank you miss reverse from philippines so it seems like in the philippines your colleagues are uh, part of your family as well so that's very good Yes, right, that is, ma'am. Yes. Our colleagues are really family and friends. Yeah, it sounds we like work, I like. We you work guys together. are always together. <laughs> it's very good. Okay. Uh, can I have somebody from Cambodia to share your working culture? Okay, uh, my name is T from Cambodia. Do you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes, yes we can uh, hello, hear you clearly. Hello, Thank uh, you. Father and sister and uh, teacher from uh, Brunei, uh, Myanmar, Philippines, and Malaysia. Yes, it's my, my first time to join this uh, workshop. Yes, uh, I would like to share our uh, working habit in Cambodia. Yes, usually in the school we start at 7 and uh, at finish at 11 o'clock. Uh, teacher, uh, they go back home and they have lunch individually. Yes, uh, and the, the, the afternoon start at one o'clock and finish at five. But uh, we are quite different from the teachers. Uh, we uh, we don't have two smart two phones. We have one phone, and uh, sometimes our boss uh, asks us to work uh, uh, as well to clear some information and send to them. And we work from Monday to Saturday, uh, full day, uh, full weeks, and, and only uh, holiday on Sunday. Yes, it's our culture of working. Yeah. And uh, currently, we don't have any hangout uh, after work because of the COVID. We still stay at home and stay safe. <laughs> thank you for uh, that's all for us from Cambodia. All right, thank you, Cambodia, for your sharing. Yeah, it's true. Like, uh, even now as well, we are um, uh, having a lockdown as well in Malaysia. So we are all working from home. Um, but yeah, that's a very nice sharing. So already you can see their different culture. Like um, in Malaysia, we work from Monday to Friday, but in uh, Cambodia, uh, you guys work from Monday to Saturday. So that's a different day as well. Uh, anybody from Vietnam, can you share with us your uh, work culture? Hi everybody. Yeah. Hello. Um, yeah. Um, my name is Wing, but uh, my name is quite hard to uh, to read uh, with the foreigners. So just call me Lila. Okay, Lila. Hi. Um. Now I'm working in a hospital, so um, I every day I have um one by one intervention. And uh, after uh, for one hour, and after after that, um, the children will come back to their um, kindergarten or family or center and or their center. Um, but um, we, uh, I, I'm my co-worker. Uh, he has a a, a special needs center too. So um, they um. They begin. They begin the uh, the class at seven uh, with the breakfast for students, and then um, one hour to uh, uh, do uh, gross model, gross model, or some uh, maybe call we can call it uh, exercise. Yeah, and um, after so um, and they. They also have a uh, lunch for for uh, children in the center and uh, um, and in the in in the afternoon they have another uh, uh, one hour grass motto for each children for each children with special uh, with specific program so um, and they uh, stop class um, they finished uh, they finished at five. 
at 5 p.m. Yeah. Now I'm uh, in uh, now uh, because of COVID in uh, uh, hospital there are no children, <laughs> no children. So I have a lot of time to uh, to, to uh, enjoy the class. But uh, I'm sorry uh, for uh, being late. Oh, no, that's okay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, uh, can I ask you, um, are you a special education teacher or uh, are you a hospital-based special education teacher? Um, no, I am I'm a graduate as a physiotherapist. Oh, okay. But, uh, yeah, but after that, I uh, applied for a, a spe um, speech therapist uh, oh, okay. course uh, to do with the children. Oh, okay. That's very interesting. So we have um, a hospital background as well, as well as special education teachers. Thank you for sharing, Ms. Lila. Okay. Um, so the next question that I have for you all. Um, all right. So we've talked about what is social skills. We've talked about components of social skills. And we've also talked about um, the different milestones. Okay. So before we go into what are some social skill difficulties that our students with um, uh, special needs display? I would like to first ask all of you, um, what are some of the common social skills difficulties that you have seen in your students? Okay, so what are the common, what do you think is a common social skill difficulty you've seen in your students? in your experience. So I would like you to share with us before we go into details. Right, can I have someone from Indonesia to maybe share your experience? As I have an answer in the chat box, low self-confidence. I think that is uh, Miss Caroline from Malaysia. Okay, the question is, um, what is a common social skill difficulty that you see in your student, that you have seen in your students? Okay, so what do you think is a common social skill difficulty you've seen in your students? And Ms. Caroline from Malaysia have said that um, low self-confidence. So yes, that is a social skill difficulty, student with low self-confidence. Right, anyone else wants to share their experience with your students? Right, in Vietnam, social skills education for children with special needs is receiving attention. So however, for older children, it is quite challenging. <laughs> okay, so lack of vocabulary, and somebody else says, uh, Miss Laura say, most of my students have attention and eye contact difficulties, um, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, inappropriate language and behavior while interacting with their friends. How do you understand special needs in children in regular schools and how to build a whole school Corporation is serving special needs children. Okay, for the question from uh, Kustanti, uh, maybe we'll talk through that at the end of the session, all right? Uh, so, Ms. Sophia said interaction skills, uh, play alone and lose attention with their peers. Uh, they try to understand instruction, but they cannot give response. Difficulties in following directions, making friends, always fighting with friends, poor communication skills, cannot work with others, uh, lack of focus. So you've given me very good, uh, you've given us very good responses. Um, and I would say most of these are actually correct. Okay, thank you for all your responses. And uh, they don't want to give eye contact. Yes, they cannot solve problems. All right, so now I'm going to share with you uh, some of my findings about what are the common social skills difficulty that our students uh, face day to day. Okay, so let me share my screen and we can start. Okay, Jen. Yes. Ada? 
Okay, there is a, there is concern concern with the teacher in uh -huh. my in, in because uh, the tea, uh, the teacher uh, traditional use the traditional method the teacher the lecture method therefore the, the, the students are listen to the the, the teaching or the the, the, the teacher uh, the, mm -hmm. therefore there is concern with the teach, teacher and the teaching methodology um, of the the, the teacher. Uh -huh. Oh, so it, uh, you oh, mean yeah. uh, it has to do with the teaching strategies of the teacher? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, it's very crucial. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Of course, okay, the yeah. way the teacher presents themselves is very crucial in getting your child's attention uh, and stuff like that. Thank you, Mr. Zhao, for your, uh, for your sharing. Okay, thank you. Okay. okay. All right. So, um, so social skills difficulties in children with special education needs. So some of the common diagnosis that we um, associate, I will go through that in a moment. Um, so, but however, um, social skills is a typically challenging skill to master in children with um, intellectual disability, developmental disability, language disorder, as well as autism. All right, so um, it's not just developmental delays, uh, even stressful situations at home. So um, inconvenience at home may also impact our children's ability to learn and practice appropriate social skills. So our children might not have a diagnosis of Down syndrome or autism or ADHD or anything like that. But it might also impact their social skills if there's not enough um, support or stressful situations at home. Okay, so some of the common diagnosis with social uh, of children who has social skill difficulties include the autism spectrum disorder, so children diagnosed with ASD, Down syndrome, um, traumatic brain injury. Uh, it's not that common, but there are cases. Um, it's ADHD, developmental language disorder, as well as intellectual disability. So we will go through one by one. Okay, for um, children with ASD, um, in my previous school, this is the majority of the diagnosis that we have. So majority of the students are diagnosed with ASD with different severity. Okay, but uh, some of the difficulties that they face is um, using social, um, having social use of language. Um, and also they tend to interpret speech literally. So they take your, what you say at very face value. So they don't interpret what's the meaning behind it. They do not understand jokes or sarcasms because they take things literally. Um, they have limited or very unusual pretend play. So they might not be able to do any pretend play at all. Uh, or they do pretend play um, in an appropriate way. Okay, so they uh, have lack of awareness of others' feelings. So they might not understand that you're feeling angry. They don't understand that you're feeling happy. They don't understand that you're feeling sad when you are talking to them. They have difficulties with problem solving because they cannot uh, reason or think about um, why things happen. Okay, they have lack of empathy. Um, if they are distressed, they do not seek comfort from someone else or seek comfort by doing something that will make them less stressed. And they have difficulties with um, initiating and maintaining friendships. They do not you know, they do not tend to um, readily share interests and enjoyment with others. They keep to themselves and they usually either do not have eye contact or have fleeting eye contact or very unusual eye contact. They may or may not have intentional gestures. However, all of these difficulties, uh, they may all present in one student or maybe some of them will present in one student. Okay. But these are the common difficulties that children with ASD faces in terms of social skills. All right, for Down syndrome, um, although they have social skills difficulty, some are the same as children with ASD, but some are quite um, more specific to children with Down syndrome. So they do have difficulty understanding social interactions. So the conventions of it, um, the context of it, um, they can be impulsive or aggressive. They have difficulties understanding figurative language. So figurative language is um, 
language that have an underlining meaning. So jokes, sarcasm, and stuff like that. They might be able uh, be unable to cope in group situations or busy environment because there's too many things to focus on. Okay, typically developing children are able to uh, cut off or let's say to ignore what is unnecessary in a busy environment. But children with Down syndrome may not be able to do so as well. Okay, they are sometimes unable to identify appropriate personal space. So children with Down syndromes are very touchy, very lovey. You know, they like to hug people, but sometimes it's a bit too much if people don't understand them. Especially with new people, it could be dangerous as well because they don't understand personal space. They don't understand um, that strangers can be dangerous. They don't understand, you know, where you can touch them, where you cannot touch them, and what is safe touch, what is unsafe touch, and things like that. Okay, so this could uh, uh, pose as a difficulty in social situations. They may have difficulties understanding and using nonverbal communications like appropriate facial expressions, appropriate gestures, appropriate body language that is suitable for the context. And also they are not able to self-regulate. Okay, so maybe regulating their expressions, regulating their emotions, um, thinking about what they did right to think about what they did wrong and how to improve that. All right, uh, with ADHD, so they are thinking of lots of things, so they might be impulsive. Uh, and this impulsivity may lead to them talking nonstop or you know, switching between topics when they talk. Okay, so they have trouble taking turns and sharing uh, because they are highly distracted. Um, and also they tend to interrupt people and break social rules, like not waiting for their turn, um, talking while other person are talking. They easily lose track of conversation as they might be distracted by thoughts that are unrelated to the social uh, context. And they have trouble with planning and follow through because they just have too many things going on in their minds. Okay, they might also mis misinterpret what others are saying as well as overreact to um, certain situations and behave inappropriately. Okay, with intellectual disability, some of the issues that they may face um, is difficulties and their, in their social and emo emotional development areas. Um, with difficulties in their development areas, they then have trouble initiating and maintaining relationships relationships because they don't understand social um what is socially appropriate or they might not have the social skills that they need to initiate and maintain relationships and thus they have difficulties forming friendships maintaining friendships making new friends and also they will misinterpret social cues okay they frequently engage, uh, uh, sorry, frequently engage in solitary or unoccupied activities, so doing things by themselves uh, or not doing anything. Okay, so, um, and they have also difficulty forming groups with their peers, okay? This is because they are intellect, uh, intellectually disabled kids are um, usually underdeveloped in many of the um, areas or skills. Uh, therefore, this affects their abilities to be able to interact with their friends, to be able to make friends, to be able to uh, interpret what is right or wrong in different social contexts. Right, so students with developmental language disorder um, although their other skills might not be um, affected, however, because language plays a, an important role in um, being able to communicate and interact daily, um, therefore children with language disorders also have difficulties in developing their emotions uh, because they do not understand uh, the language that pertains to emotions and they, they do not understand uh, the different types of emotions. And because of that, uh, because of them not being able to understand and also having difficulties interacting, they might experience social withdrawal because they are aware that 
they are not able to interact with other people properly. So this uh, affects their self-confidence and self-esteem, this um, resulting in them to withdraw themselves from the society. Okay. Um, they may have aggressive behaviors because of the underlying language disorder. So they might not have the words to express their feelings and emotions, which may then lead to um, showing their frustration or anger by having uh, problematic behaviors. Uh, Ms. T. Wapon, can you mute your mic? Thank you. Okay, so, um, and they have immature internal thinking, um, may have inappropriate responses to social situations. Again, this uh, goes back to having the underlying language disorder. So, uh, being unable to say what you feel or say what you mean uh, will then lead to you to act inappropriately. Okay, they have poor conflict resolution skills because they like the higher order, uh, the higher level language skills. Um, as well as they would take longer time to reach uh, group decisions because this required them to be able to cooperate with other people. Okay, traumatic brain injury. Now, this is uh, something that does not usually occur and is usually acquired. So it's not something you grow up with. So this can occur after you have a, a car incident or um, any sort of other incident. But social skills would be impacted um, depending on which part of your brain is injured. Okay. So if it's the frontal lobe, which has to do with um, your social, uh, your reasoning, your thinking, so it will also impact your social skills. All right. So people with traumatic brain injury have very specific uh, social skill difficulties uh, because they have, uh, this, uh, they have already learned all these social skills, but an incident makes them forget or lose the social skills that they have. All right. So they might feel out of place and uncomfortable around people because they don't know how to react or more like they forgot how to react. Um, they may lose focus during a, a conversation. This has got to do with memory and attention. Uh, they might misunderstand words, facial expressions, tone of voice or actions if the part of the brain um, that is impaired has got to do with understanding of uh, language um, and nonverbal cues. They might have trouble expressing their thoughts and feelings. So these are the things that they have learned before. So they've learned, uh, they have had no trouble with uh, expressing their thoughts and feelings before. But because the part of the brain that is um, responsible for expressive language is impaired, then this might, this will also impair their social ability to express their thoughts and feelings. Okay, they might not show interest in what others have to say. Um, and they might not, uh, and they might lose the ability to know how to start or maintain a conversation. And they might end up take, talking too little or too much. So um, I've had an experience with a traumatic brain injury client, uh, which are usually adult clients, um, around 25 to 35 years old, um, where he just wouldn't stop talking. Uh, he would just continue on and on and on. You could start on a topic, then he will go to the next topic and not stop. But it's not because he wants to, but because his brain is impaired that he cannot stop talking. <laughs> okay, so this is a very special case. It doesn't usually happen in our children. It might happen, but it's very rare compared to the rest that I showed you before. Okay, so um, some of the other social skill issues that our friends here have shared is um, students have less communication among them. So among sp special education children, they communicate less. They have difficulties understanding instructions. Um, they have lack of vocabulary, especially when they have to speak with their friends. Um, they use body language, but sometimes it's difficult to interpret their body language. So this is what is meant by inappropriate body language. So maybe the bo body language that you use, they use um, is not appropriate to the situation or context, which is why um, the teachers as the communication partner is unable to understand that body language. Okay. All right. So looking at um, 
all the different social skill difficulties that our children experience. Uh, can anybody tell me if you had an experience of um, if you could identify um, the difference between your your students with autism and Down syndrome? So what are the different prominent social skill difficulties that you see in them? Like for me personally, I have had a, a high level autistic client as well as a high level uh, Down syndrome client. With my autistic client, um, the social skill issues that um, he faced um, is that he is reluctant to make his friends upset, although um, it may make him, you know, suffer. So let's say he's a very good drawer. And his friends like for him, uh, like to ask him to draw stuff for them because he doesn't know how to say no. And he doesn't know that he has feelings too. He cannot, um, he cannot, um, understand that he can also feel tired. He can also feel frustrated for doing things for other people. So he accepts all of his friends requests. Um, with the uh, note in mind that I don't want, don't want to upset my friends. I just want my friends to be happy with me. However, um, the problem, it just becomes a problem uh, when he becomes so absorbed in, you know, making his friends happy that he himself was burned out. He was very fatigued from doing everything that his friends asked him to. He was upset and he doesn't want to go to school because he doesn't want to disappoint his friends. Uh, so this may seem like something very little to us because we know when to say no. Uh, but for children with autism, uh, in the case of my client, um, he doesn't know when to say no, and this is eating him inside. Uh, so what I need to do with him is, uh, I need to teach him in what situations you can say no, what is considered appropriate behavior. So these are the things I need to teach him. Whereas in, uh, another similar age children with a uh, child with Down syndrome, the main issue that this child is experiencing in terms of social skills is not knowing, um, when uh, it's being too friendly around other people. So even with new strangers, she is a bit too friendly. She doesn't mind getting touch anywhere. So this will pose as, uh, as an issue later on, because, um, depending on the context that you are in, some touch is okay. And some touch is not okay. So for someone who is typically developing, you would know, um, when you are with strangers, they're not allowed to touch you. Like they're not allowed to touch, um, anywhere that is private to you. But this child, she doesn't have that knowledge because her social skills are impaired. Okay. So, um, that's the main difference with autism. Um, the social skills difficulties are more pertaining to feelings and emotions. Um, not understanding social rules, but with down syndrome, uh, the ones that I observe, it has to do more with, um, not knowing personal space, uh, not knowing, um, I don't know, things that are safe and unsafe. So they have different dilemmas. So with your special, um, education children, what is one difference that you can see between your autistic and down syndrome? Because they have, these are the two most common diagnoses in schools. Uh, can someone from I don't think we, we've heard from anyone from Indonesia yet. Can we have someone from Indonesia maybe share your experience uh, of what are the difficulties that your autistic children and Down syndrome children have displayed? And we have a representative from Indonesia to maybe share. Or anybody else uh, who would like to share? Um... If you're shy to uh, turn on your mic, you can always uh, write in the chat box.
Uh, hello, I'm Fisha. I'm from Thailand. Hello, hi. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, yes, my name is Atitan. I'm from Thailand. So I want to share about um, autistic and the Down syndrome from uh, the different they have. So from autistic, we have um, about, about social skill. Already, but for the Down syndrome, they don't have from from in my mm. from my students. So, example or uh, autistic, they would don't like you to hug, to say 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 to you. In Down syndrome, want to want you to hug, to kiss, to love. Yet yeah, that that's from what I I see. Okay, that's just very good observation. Thank you, uh, Miss Atitan. Okay, so that's a very good observation. And yes, most uh, autistic children, they don't like you touching them. They don't like making eye contact with you. But most Down syndrome children, they love that physical affection uh, and they love making contact with you. Uh, however, um, this love of physical affection and making contact can be a problem in certain social contexts. So uh, both of these need to be addressed, actually. So yes, so that's very good sharing. Thank you, Miss Atitan. Okay, all right. So, um, okay. So, um, all these social skill difficulties will definitely have an impact in your student's life. So I've um, divided the impacts into five different areas, uh, which uh, we're going to three now which is academic um, relationship as well as in the society. So academic wise, um, children with social skill difficulties would um, you know, misinterpret instructions so they won't be able to participate in class. Uh, and because of the lack of abstract thinking, they would struggle with things like imaginative writing um, as well as with academic tasks that, uh, that you know, requires higher or the reasoning and thinking skills. They might also be unable to attend to tasks, so this will definitely impact their participation in class. In terms of relationship, they would have difficulties maintaining relationship because they don't have the um, social skills to understand the importance of maintaining a relationship. They might be bullied by others, like the case of my client, because he doesn't understand what is acceptable, that what is unacceptable, when to say no, um, you know, he is then bullied by his friends, okay? And they may also struggle in reaching common understanding in relationship if not presented literally. So in, a, let's say, a husband and wife relationship, if you don't say directly that, oh, I'm sad, I am sad because of, because of this, someone with social skill difficulties may not be able to interpret from your facial expression that you are upset, okay? So this will definitely impact your positive relationship as well. So in the society, they might be frowned upon because of inappropriate behaviors or responses in social situations. They might also be easily tricked because they can't interpret, you know, verbal cues, nonverbal cues. Because of um, the lack of interpretation skills, they might be easily tricked by other people. And also, they might then avoid getting involved with the society because of the fear of, you know, um, um, having to interact with other people. So they would avoid crowd and group gathering. So this would heavily impact their life as well. Now, in terms of mental health and employment, um, actually research has shown that people with social skill difficulties are more prone to um, have issues like social anxiety. So not wanting to be in a social situation, uh, depression, um, stress, as well as loneliness. Um, okay, so this may come from, you know, um, avoiding social situations, which then leads to you not having any relationship with others. So in long term, this will affect your mental health and will lead to all these um, disorders. Okay, and also research has shown that uh, if your mental health is affected, it could also potentially affect your physical health. Because when you're depressed, when you're lonely, when you're stressed, you just don't feel like doing anything. So indirectly, it will affect your physical health as well. All right. Um, in terms of employment, um, you may experience negative experiences at the workplace because of inappropriate 
um, social behaviors. They would struggle with work related decision making because of the stress, because of the group work, because of be, uh, you know having to work in a team, and also my struggle in interviews due to difficulties in organizing thoughts. So if social skills are not um, you know being intervened, it might also affect the ability to be employed. Okay, or their um, situation at the workplace. All right. So, uh, okay, before uh, we are going towards the end of our uh, presentation, so I have a small trivia for everyone to participate in. Uh, hang on, how do I access the chat box? Okay, so... Um, um, I'm going to show the questions and then I'll just like you to answer in the chat box uh, which one you think is the correct answer. Okay, so there are a few questions here. Okay, so the first one, uh, what are social skills? So you can just uh, put your questions in the chat box. Uh, sorry, put your answer in the chat box. Okay, B. Okay, so most of you are saying B. Are you sure? Okay, good. So, okay. yes, it's B. Social skills are skills that we use to interact with others. So this is just a very brief uh, definition of social skills. Okay, next one. Why, why are social skills important? B. Okay, most of the answers here is C. So let's check the answer. Okay, yes. Social skills are important because of uh, you want to build and maintain positive inter interactions with others. All right, next question. What are some examples of social skills? Okay, everybody is answering D. Are you guys sure? Okay, yes, correct. All of the above. That was a trick question. <laughs> okay, next one. Which one is not a component of social skills? This one is a bonus question, actually. So yes, A, fine motor skills is not a component. The rest are components of social skills. Correct. Okay, next one. Uh, case study. Okay, Anna currently shows a wider range of emotions and is starting to enjoy playing with other kids. Anna's parents describe her as always kind and caring towards others. Now, which age category does Anna's social skills correspond to? So we've got B. Anybody else has other answers? Somebody answered C. And I've got D as well. Okay, majority of you answered B. Let's see if that's correct. Okay, so the answer is uh, three to four years old. Okay, good. All right, next one. Tony is a 12-year-old boy diagnosed with autism. Tony loves to imitate his parents during mealtime. He usually spends time playing next to his brother, but not with his brother. Now, which age category does Tony's skills, uh, social skills correspond to? So I'm getting C and D. Right, majority of you are saying C. Let's check your answer. Yes, C. Two to three years old. Good job. All right, Taylor has been diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder with characteristics of ADHD. So double diagnose, okay, ASD and ADHD. So what are the social difficulties that Taylor may face? Is it understanding emotions, initiating conversations, uh, being distracted during interactions and also organizing thoughts? Which ones? 
So everybody is answering D so far. Does someone say C? Okay, let's check the answer. Okay, it's D, all of them, right? Because um, Taylor has both ASD and ADHD. So both um, social skill difficulties, um, they will face both social skill difficulties of these two. All right. Okay, next question. Lizzie suffered from a traumatic brain injury after a horrible car crash during a weekend getaway. Which of the following social skills difficulties Lizzie may not experience? So which one she will not experience? B, A, D. Okay, I've got all answers now. <laughs> okay, we've got people answering A, B, C, and D. Okay, let's see what's the answer. So the answer is B, difficulties and emotional development. Because remember, with traumatic brain injury, they've already developed, they've acquired the difficulties. Okay. All right, so that's all the trivia questions. Um, we will be opening for another Q&A session. Maybe two questions? We have five more minutes to go. Okay, anybody has any questions? You can um, either switch on your microphone or write in the chat box. Okay, Dr. Yasmin. Hello. Hello, Jose Montero from Timor-Leste. So, uh, may you will send the content to us so I can, we can read it more? Yes, sure. Um, after we finish the three-day course, um, the organizers will send all of the slides to all of the participants. Thank you very much. Thank no you very problem. Much. Yeah. So what time it will be finished yet? I don't know exactly. Uh, so for today, we are going to finish in four more minutes, actually 12 o'clock. Oh, thank you. Uh, 12 o'clock Malaysia time. Thank you. Okay. So it's more or less one hour ahead. Sorry? Yeah. In Timor Leste, one hour ahead. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So maybe later, a like couple of minutes. Okay, teacher. Uh, yes, yes. Hello and good morning, Jada. Good morning. Uh, I am Mimia Du from Myanmar. Uh, I am on originally mainstream teachers, but now teaching in uh, visual impairment students okay. in regular classes. The school in Myanmar reopened the first day of the June 2021. Uh, but uh, uh, but the high rate of COVID-19 will uh, mm. uh, my visual environment students can join the class. So we are uh, preparing the, to open and teach our students through online. Uh, and my question is, in this situation, how, uh, how can I do uh, to, pro uh, to promote their social skill in this situation? Uh, would you like to give some suggestions? For online classes, you mean? Yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you for your question. Okay, so I think uh, what uh, Tisha Maymet is experiencing is what everyone is experiencing at the moment because of the um, you know, increasing COVID-19 cases. Most of us are actually working from home and students are um, you know, learning from home as well. So um, what we can do is to... Oh, but it's visually impact. Uh, what we can do is to have more um, visual cues to help during the online lessons. Or you can start with, um, you know, talking about rules uh, for the online lesson because rules is also part of a social um, skill. Okay, students need to be able to understand rules in order for them to be able to understand what is the what is socially accepted in uh, during the online classes. So you could focus on things like rules, uh, turn taking. So these are all social skills that you can focus in an online setting, right? Turn taking. Um, you could also focus on talking about emotions and feelings. Mm. 
So things that you do not need um, anything, any physical uh, objects to assist in doing the activities. Okay, but we will talk more about strategies that are more specific to the social skill difficulties on the third day. Okay, and we will see whether there are some that can be applied to online um, contacts. Yes, All right. Yes, no worries. Okay, so we have come, we have two more minutes. So before we end, um, I would like to get your opinion um, on what you've uh, learned today. So if you could um, scan the QR code or go to the website and put in the code, uh, we'll get a brief idea of um, how our participants have been feeling today. Okay. Okay, if you uh, did not get to scan the QR code, the um, code for this presentation is at the top of the screen. So I'll give you a few moments to uh, leave your response. So some of the new terms that our participants learn today is um, social skill, new knowledge, uh, brain traumatized injury, turn taking. Development milestones, figurative language. Okay, very good. So some of you learn new terms today. Some may be familiar with most of the terms. All right. Uh, so let's look at the next question. So we haven't covered this today, uh, but I just want you to um, share your thoughts on what you think are activities that you can do in the classroom to target social skills. Has activity good storytelling, singing, different instructions, fun play, oral presentation, very good. Group work, games, role play, greeting expressions, good. I saw a comment saying dancing, engage students to converse with peers, drawing, short drama, very good. Make rules card session before starting teaching online. Good. Uh, play games, group work, sharing stories. Peer activities or small groups. Good. Fun play, somebody said in the chat box. Presentation, I guess the public speaking, I think there was one up there. Play activities for small groups. Okay, thank you very much for your response. All right, so I think there are two questions in the chat box that I haven't answered. Let me have a look. Um, okay, so uh, one of the teachers here, uh, Ms. Najiha, asked me, uh, can you tell me more about Pelat? So Pelat... Um, is in Malay. Pelat is actually speech sound disorder. So uh, speech sound disorders um, uh, is, okay, uh, if a child has speech sound disorder, it may or may not affect their social skill disorder. Um, if they have no problem in their confidence with their speech sound disorder, then it might not really affect their social skill disorder. But teacher Najiha, if you want to know more about so speech sound disorders, uh, maybe I can leave my email so that you can um, ask me question personally because that's a different topic altogether. So it will take quite some time to explain about that. 
And I'll just leave my email in the chat box. So if you have any other questions, you can ask me at my email. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So um, teacher Zaitun asked, who else can teach social skills besides uh, special education teachers? Okay. So, um, okay. So, um, if your students or child is experiencing social skill difficulties, um, a speech therapist can help, a speech language pathologist can help, as well as a clinical psychologist, they can help with teaching social skills as well. Okay, so these are the two that I'm sure of that can help out. Um, occupational therapists might also work with social skills, uh, but um, I would say the the most suitable person to go to would be a speech therapist or a clinical psychologist. Okay. All right, I'll be accepting. One last question, I think, because we're already uh, 12 o'clock now. Um, how we can educate parents to help their special needs children in increasing social skills? So at first, we need to first educate the parents on what are social skills and what are the typically developing social skills. Um, after that, then you would then uh, talk about the impact of social skills. So basically what I went through today, you could went through that with parents in order for them to be able to understand that they need to help the children with, um, you know, needs in, uh, sorry, need help the children with social skills difficulties. All right. Okay, is there any teacher can teach deaf students? Can you share how you improve their social skills in class? Um, if there's anyone, I think you can share with your friends here. I haven't Hello, had much experience with uh, hearing impairment. Hello. Good yes, morning. Hello, I'm from Philippines and I'm yes. also teaching learner with educational needs with hearing impairment. Oh, that's good. We have one here. Yes, ma'am. As was ma'am Juliana asking, how can you share how to improve your social skills in class? I offer ma'am uh, activity that is more uh, involvement as a group as a group mom, as well as differentiated instruction. Mm. You, to improve their social skills, you have to give an activity that, that involves everyone in the class. And then Thank that make Yes, yes, continue, continue, please. <laughs> and as well as they cannot, uh, of course they cannot speak because they cannot hear words they use a sign language but they are very talkative and they like to share their experience and also you can use visual cues yes very That's good uh miss reverence i think that covers it so yes although they cannot speak but they can be very talkative with their sign language as well so group work is very good and having visual cues to set uh group rules uh so that's a very good um strategy as well so maybe you can practice this, practice that in your class too thank you miss reverence for your sharing um and this uh last question last question okay from what age did the developmental stages begin to show character differences that lead to special needs so typically if your child um shows that he or she is at least uh six months below what he or she is supposed to be at so let's say uh she's um two years old, but is at the level of a one year old or one and a half year old, then you would be, then you would start to, you know, check whether, um, whether it's something that is disordered or whether it's just um, a matter of um, giving more exposure to that child. Okay. So definitely if it's um, more than six months delay, then you would need to start thinking about checking whether uh, if there's anything that needs to be done. All right. Yeah, I think um, that's all for today from me. Uh, I'll give the floor back to the moderator. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for participating.